All right, so this is one way to look at the overview of all of the immune system. If this works for you, great. If not, you know, like we're going to be adding a lot to this figure. We're going to be taking something. I don't know. We're just mostly going to be adding to this or kind of shuffling things around. So if this works for you, great. I wouldn't suggest just copying this down because we'll sort of be categorizing things slightly differently from this. But the basic idea is that now we're going to be talking about the specific, um, the second line of defense, which is nonspecific and internal, nonspecific and internal. So you'll see here innate defenses, uh, what we will be calling the nonspecific defenses of the body, include what we just discussed in the first video, and then what we're going to be discussing in this video. We're going to start off with just um, defining the term pathogen. A pathogen is any harmful or disease-causing microorganism. When pathogens infiltrate the body, um, there are nonspecific internal defenses in place. So we're going to start off with the idea of phagocytosis. So what we're looking at here are, is phagocytosis. Certain cells have the ability to consume pathogens. For example, we've talked about macrophages that are present in the blood, the lymphatic system, and the tissues. Um, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils can, uh, are, are phagocytes or can become phagocytes as well. Um, there are these specialized cells in the epidermis of the skin that are called dendritic cells. Those also um, are capable of phagocytosis. And so take a look at this figure. We'll be discussing it in class. Some of the terms that you'll need to know here are phagosome, lysosome, and phagolysosome. The next term that we're going to be discussing is the inflammatory response. When it comes down to it, the inflammatory response is kind of the only, like one of the very, very few actual um, defenses that the body has when you're being attacked by something that is truly harmful. So the inflammatory response includes redness, heat, swelling, and pain in a tissue. This is triggered when tissues are injured by any kind of trauma, um, an injury or a sprain or any any kind of a trauma injures a tissue, an inflammatory response is sure to follow. So there are three region, reasons to have an inflammatory response. Basically, you know, fluids zoom into a region. So one, this prevents the damage, the spread of damage to nearby tissues because everything's coming in and very little is getting out. Second, it disposes of cell debris and pathogens, usually through the lymphatic system. And third, it sets the stage for repair. When you have all of these chemicals and, chemi and cells and things coming into the area, it helps to repair things. So as part of your inflammatory response, you're going to have chemicals called cytokines and proteins called complement. And these kind of have, especially cytokines, cytokines are going to be one of those things that are going to be coming up. Again and again, you'll be seeing more of them. They're very powerful chemicals. Um, and what they do is they promote inflammation, they attract white blood cells to an injured area, they cause vasodilations, and they increase the permeability of capillaries. Okay, so when we think of the second line of defense, I would say that the first one you should write down, kind of like number one, would be phagocytosis, what we discussed here. The second one you should write down is in the inflammatory response. And then the third one I would write is probably cytokines. <laughs> so cytokines are, chem I know that we just talked about cytokines as part of the inflammatory response, but also cytokines are their own, their own category because cytokines can be released as part of the inflammatory response or they can be released separately. So I hope that makes sense. So number three, cytokines. These are chemical mediators that enhance the immune response. They are released by both macrophages and activated T lymphocytes, and they help to mobilize lymphocytes and macrophages, so you see kind of like the building up sort of the um, positive homeostatic um, reaction here. And then this in turn attracts other white blood cells to the area and helps to amplify all kinds of nonspecific defenses. As I said, Cytokines are one of those words that you're going to be seeing coming up again, and they are very, very important. Okay, next we have complement. Complement is shown here. Complement is actually a series of proteins. 35 or more 
or in some texts it's 20 or more. But anyway, any, some number of blood-borne proteins. The proteins can stack together and make things happen. They release chemical mediators that lyse cells or break cells apart. And they're capable of opsonization. Opsonization is the idea that you can coat a particle in sugar, basically, in carbohydrates. So it's basically a sugar coat. And this helps to make it more readily phagocytized which is what we were discussing back here. So again, you see these, you know, this complementary action going on, things moving back and forth, working together. Okay, next we have natural killer cells, which I think are only listed in here. In here. Natural killer cells are capable of perforating harmful cells. They tend to act before the specific immune system is activated. Natural killer cells will go for anything non-self. That is something you should kind of keep in mind with natural killer cells. They, they go for anything non-self. And by the way, just so you know, looking forward a little bit, natural killer cells have a lot in common with cytotoxic T cells. They work by a very similar mechanism, but there are a few key differences between them. Here we see the story of the, in, the interferons. Interferons are specific to viruses. It's for viral protection. Um, the idea here is interferons are proteins that are secreted by cells that are already infected by a virus. There's the virus up here. This cell is being infected over here. And here are the interferons being released. So this cell, which is infected by viruses, releases the interferons. And then these interferons go to neighboring cells and they block transcription of proteins in the neighboring cells to protect the neighboring cell against the virus. So we'll talk more about that in class. We'll draw some pictures and stuff. And lastly, we have a fever. The idea of a fever is that um, it, is an abnormally high, oops, it is an abnormally high body temperature. It helps to speed up your metabolism. It ensures faster circulation and faster tissue repair. It causes the body to sequester iron and zinc in the spleen and the liver. And these are important substances. Iron and zinc are actually needed by bacteria for survival. So if you have a nasty infection, sometimes sequestering away essential um, ions from those pathogens can be helpful.